What's up, everybody? It is the Canes Inside Podcast. D Money flying solo. Pete's out in Las Vegas doing official Asian business for these All Star games. You know he's supporting his guys and uh, getting some intel on on Kane prospects like Tyreek Stevenson and how they're doing. Uh, we'll have a lot of NFL feedback from him next week. But for now, Brian Solo. Uh, later on, we're going to bring on Jose Duazo, the GM of Team Raw, formerly Team Immortals. You may know some of his protégés: Cam Kitchens, first team All America, Wesley Bassaint. Uh, he's got a whole new crop. A lot of them visited Miami this past weekend uh, after playing in a tournament. Multiple five stars, four stars. Uh, he's going to talk about them. These are names you want to know. See who's going to be the next Cam Kitchens uh, to come out of Duazo's program. Uh, got a shout out to Brett and Kingswear. Got my Kingswear shirt, Kingswear flag in the back. Uh, thanks for the stuff. You guys have been the best supporter of this pod, and uh, you know, real excited to jump into some some Kings news. Obviously, it's late January. Late January used to be the hottest time of year with recruiting. Now it's a little bit down. But as we close the book on 23, a little earlier than maybe we would in the past, we opened the door to 2024. And there are a lot of players to talk about with Coach Duasso and some transfers coming into Miami, uh, which we'll talk about. You know, there are a few big topics that I want to touch on. Uh, big three, let's say. So let's start with number one. It's the same topic we've been starting with for the past few weeks. Josh Gaddis. I've been saying it consistently. Josh Gaddis will not be the offensive coordinator of Miami next year. I would be beyond stunned. I, I'd be, it would, it would, it'd be like the Indians when they saw uh, Columbus and the ships coming in. They couldn't even see him because it's beyond their comprehension. That's how I would feel if Gaddis was on the sideline next year. Uh, I just do not see any possible way that's going to happen. Um, I thought he'd be gone by now. Um, my understanding is there's certain things going on. Um, you know, just administratively, but that is a foregone conclusion that Josh Gaddis will not be back. Uh, if you need any more confirmation of that, uh, Lou Moga, a quarterback out of Arizona who was visiting Miami, uh, spoke to, uh, to Coach Cristobal, and Cristobal told him you should have a new offensive coordinator next week. So, you know, take his word for it. He told, uh, he told Kane Sport that in an interview. And again, this goes along with a multitude of information suggesting that this guy is not going to be back next year. Um, one interesting thing that I've heard consistently uh, from co from folks around the program is with respect to the next offensive coordinator, just Cristobal in general, I could see more of a quarterback run element in this offense. I don't think it's going to be like an option offense necessarily. You know, it's not like we're going to just be turning it to Rich Rodriguez, but whoever comes in, I think you're going to see more athleticism from the quarterback position. Um, you know, I, I think Cristobal, if if he had his pick based on things I've heard, he would like a quarterback that not only is mobile, like a Tyler Van Dyke, but someone who can actually run for yards like a Jakari or like some of his recent offers at the quarterback position for the class of 2024. On that note, Miami had a quarterback on campus this week, uh, Luke Moga out of Arizona, I just mentioned. Uh, this guy runs a 10, 900 meter, extremely fast, um, three-star prospect, but blowing up with offers Talk about Oregon, Arizona state, Oklahoma state, and of course, Miami, uh, Chris is not on campus. Obviously the officer coordinator who will be his officer coordinator was not on campus. So it's a sort of a preliminary visit, hopefully just uh, something to get, to get the interest going. Uh, but he enjoyed it and he's someone Miami likes a lot. Again, 10, 900, about a four, five, 40. You see that in his, in his highlights. Uh, he does have a live arm, about six, two and a half, not the biggest guy in the world, but, but, you know, not Tate Martell or anything like that in terms of size. Um, interesting offer. Uh, this, this is a guy who did not play football until ninth grade. He was more a soccer player and is really emerging. And I think it, it's a window into what Cristobal wants in a quarterback, separate from any coordinator. You look at uh, Emery Willings last year, that was really a pond sky. And I think the fact that there's no offensive guys in the mix right now, you see a, a Luke Moga, that's a crystal ball offer. So you're seeing a little bit of what crystal ball envisions. He's not an offensive guru that has his own quarterback uh, philosophy necessarily, but he knows what he likes. And I think you're seeing a little bit of that with Moga, that he likes an athletic guy. And I heard that specifically, particularly when Jakari Brown was coming up, that the crystal ball wants a guy like that. You saw a little bit with that with Anthony Brown, Oregon, uh, but you're seeing that with Moga. So uh, Moga is somebody who, my, could be Miami's quarterback of the future. These guys 
there's only so many quarterback spots in the country. A lot of them are filled up. So when a guy like that comes on campus and, and gets the full court press from Cristobal, um, you pay attention to those sort of things. Now, one thing you're hearing a lot of is uh, another three star at Emory Williams last year. Uh, we need a big time quarterback. And, you know, here's what I'll say about the quarterback position this is my philosophy is my philosophy last year. There is no position that has more bust in terms of the highly rated top five guys than the quarterback position, high school to college. You see it every single year. Um, you look at the, uh, the playoffs, 14 quarterbacks, 10 of them were three-star nobodies. Uh, three of them were four-star quarterbacks, but not, you know, top five guys. And then you have Trevor Lawrence, who was, uh, you know, number one player overall in the country. So it's a hard position to peg. When you see 13 million for a guy like Jaden Rashada, you know, makes you wonder. It's almost like high school pitchers in the MLB draft. I've compared it to that because some of them will be good. A lot of them will flame out. My opinion, if you're Alabama, you're Georgia, Ohio State, you're taking five-star everything. So that's not even a question. But if you're a team like Miami that has a limited pool, a good pool of NIL, but a limited pool of NIL, you know, it's not infinite money, even though it's very good. Um, you need to pick your spots. And to me, picking your spots means defense alignment, the premier defense alignment, which Miami needs to do a better job of, given the fact that they have not signed that five-star defense alignment, uh, certainly not defensive tackle lately. And secondary players, you know, those guys tend to pan out when they're highly rated. Miami's missed on the Patrick Petersons, the Patrick Sertans, and you've seen what happened. Hopefully Cormani McLean uh, doesn't fall into that category down the road. Um, you know, I think those first two guys probably had a little more football character. Um, Cormani, someone who had some, you know, almost got kicked off the team Lakeland midseason. Um, there was a hope that he had turned the corner and he might have, um, but there's, you know, there's some questions there. That's not really sour crepes. Cause if he's, if he signed with Miami, we'd be throwing a two hour celebration podcast. So don't get that part twisted. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, but certainly Miami needs to land five-star defensive backs. If you look at the, the, the all of all pro list this year, Patrick Sertan Jr., um, Derwin James, Micah Fitzpatrick, these are five-star players that became all pros, uh, defense, defensive tackle, defensive line, we're talking about Nick Bosa at end, Chris Jones at tackle, um, Dexter Lawrence at, at tackle, Miles Garrett at end. These five-star players at those positions tend to pan out. Miami needs to do a better job of landing those guys. Those are the, the if you're allocating NIL money, I want it going to those positions and guys like that. Um, and, and with, and with the character to match, you're not necessarily losing sleep over whether they're going to work out or do those sort of things. If, if I'm putting a priority list, that's where I'm focusing on high school quarterback, highly rated high school quarterback would be lower on the list. In my view, you have the portal. So if you want a solid guy, or if you a, a really, really good quarterback comes in the portal that you pay for, cause you know what you're getting high school quarterback, you, you know, you spent 13 million on Rashad and maybe the guy doesn't even pan out. Uh, that would be a position I shy away from. doesn't mean Miami should be shining, signing three stars every year. I'm not trying to rationalize that, uh, but just give me a feel for my quarterback philosophy when it comes to the NIL era and the portal era. Get guys that have special traits and special intangibles at quarterback, even if they're not the five-star guy. You know, this guy, Luke Moga, and he's just one guy. I'm not saying he's the guy, but special speed, live arm, multi-sport guy. Someone who can develop. That to me is what Miami should be targeting in the high school ranks at quarterback. You do not need to be the polished, you know, five star quarterback coach, finished product coming out because a lot of those guys don't pan out. The guys that tend to pan out are the Joe Burrows who played multiple sports. Then they get to college and they focus on one sport and really, really improve. Urban Meyer said that when he got to Ohio or when Burrow got to Ohio State, that he could barely throw. He was much worse of a passer than Dwayne Haskins, the, the late Dwayne Haskins. So those athletic, slightly under-recruited uh, guys with very nice athletic traits and physical traits and intangibles tend to improve a lot. Those are the guys I like to focus on with the five-star, four-star, three-star. That's what I would be taking at the quarterback position, high upside guys with some special traits and some great athletic ability. If you want to really break the bank for five-stars, do it at defensive tackle. 
do it at cornerback, two positions that Miami has really needs uh, to hit big on. So I'm ranting a little bit there, but just kind of giving you my philosophy. Luke Moga, that's just one name. But in general, I think Miami should be looking for special traits and, and intangibles at that quarterback position, even if it's not the five-star guy. I understand why Miami fans are frustrated. They're not seeing those five-star quarterbacks. Obviously, Miami's offense, the crystal ball presided over, didn't inspire any any great excitement. That helps explain why you're not seeing those five-star, four-star quarterbacks knocking down Miami's door. Um, but don't dismiss this guy just because he's a three-star. Uh, he'll probably be a four-star at the end of the process, and he's someone with exciting traits uh, that Miami can develop. All right, another big development this past week, Terry Roberts out of Iowa will be transferring to Miami. Uh, he's a slot corner, played outside corner for Iowa. Iowa was arguably the best defense in the nation last year. Uh, Roberts started the first three games, ultimately got hurt, nicked up, didn't really play the rest of the year, uh, but should be good to go at Miami. Um, starting on that defense, again, the best defense probably in the country is an accomplishment in itself. But what I like about Roberts is, again, the intangible qualities. Is he going to be what you wanted Cormani McLean to be? No, he doesn't have that kind of talent. Um, 5'10", 4'0", shuttle, so very quick, fast, but not a speedster. Um, you know, not a 4'3 kind of guy, but fast enough. Uh, but he's somebody who the intangibles he brings from Iowa's programs, full of guys like this, but this guy was a leader on Iowa's program. He was on the, the leadership uh, council. He was, con the, he was uh, considered one of the top special teams players that Kirk Ferentz has seen in 20 years, according to him. So gives an idea of the value he brings as a gunner and just overall as a, as a leader and a, and a professional and someone who, who really handles his business. And I think that's something that is needed in Miami's cornerback room. You're talking about a room with multiple four stars. A Tyreek Stevenson is going to be in the NFL draft as a day one, day two pick. Um, and you still struggled with pass defense. One of the worst pass efficiency defenses in the country this past year. And it wasn't because of physical talent. A lot of people not on the same page, miscommunications, et cetera. I think a guy like Terry Roberts helps stabilize that group. Not only potentially holds down that nickel spot or an outside corner spot, it brings a leader, and I've been told he actually could get some looks at safety. Maybe move him to safety, bring James Williams down into the box, and uh, and really maximize everybody's ability and have him directing traffic with Camp Kitchens, another high-character guy in that secondary, someone who's probably going to emerge more as a leader now that he is an All-America. So you know, a lot more leadership there um, and a lot more intelligence in the secondary, which I think is what that group really, really needs. So we are going to bring on Jose Duasso, GM of Team Raw, guiding the careers of numerous five-star prospects and four-star prospects that Miami's got a ton of interest in. Uh, first, I want to talk to you about underdog fantasy. NFL playoffs are rolling. Uh, NBA is going strong. You want to make some money, have some fun, put some extra fun on these games. But an underdog fantasy, daily fantasy drafts, uh, over-unders on player performance, you sign up with promo code CIS and you get $200 free to play. Uh, you support the podcast and you get to uh, have $200 to play with this weekend right away uh, on these playoff games, NBA, NHL, and, you know, MMA, big UFC coming up. You name it, you will be able to play it on Underdog Fantasy. Promo code CIS for free $200. Again, uh, Duasso after the break, but first, some words from our friends at Caneswear. If there is one iconic item as far as Kane's fashion, it is that Kane starter jacket. You've seen it in the Uncle Luke videos going back to the 80s uh, to today in 2023. It is still the number one jacket, the number one item of Kane's clothing you could wear. Caneswear, caneswear.com, got it $98 special introductory price. You can get it from small up to 5XL. So any size that you have, they got the jacket for you. Special introductory price of $98. Um, it's, it's cold right now. All across the country, when mine was a little chilly, get that starter jacket while you can still show it off. Uh, you know, if you're into basketball, Canes basketball, they got the jerseys, the shirts, uh, the shorts. Support the best team in town, uh, Miami Heat. You know, you got uh, all kinds of soccer gear there. Anything you want Canes related, it is Canes heaven. Prices are as good as they're going to get this time of year. So you want to go to Caneswear and Davey or Caneswear.com. 
the best in the business when it comes to Miami sports apparel. All right, we are here with uh, Pat Riley in a hoodie, the <laughs> South Florida legend, somebody who, you know, you are the franchise because you leave a team and you go to a new team and that team is the team. So we're talking about Team Raw, general manager, Jose Duasso, coming to you live from Tales of the Crypt or wherever you're at, man, looking, can barely see you. But uh, how, how you doing, man? An alumni social for a good friend of mine that just got named head coach at Westminster Christian. There you go. All right, man. So listen, big tournament this past week. Tell me how <clears throat> shit. Fuck. Let's look at that. Big tournament last week. Tell me how it went. How how did uh how team raw look? Uh unfortunately, our goal is always to win it all, and we lost uh in the top five, top eight. I like to say top eight, my partners say top five. Uh uh, to a, a young scrappy team that has been together for a while um great great team well coached good friends of mine but uh honestly we're we're absolutely loaded from from top to bottom especially on the defensive side of the ball obviously my offense isn't too far behind the number one corner of the country we have Anquan Fegan's the number one safety in the country then I got Jaden Hardy who's who's a top five safety in the country out of Dallas Texas um, a kid named Kevin Humes out of St. Francis. I got just from top to bottom, young studs out of Miami Central and Saku Smith, Javari Flowers, uh, Kasani Giles out of IMG. Uh, just, just absolutely loaded. CJ Mitchell out of the Polk County area. And then we kind of have a, a Band-Aid and freshly committed. I'm not committed. I'm sorry. Offered Loay McCoy out of Miami Central. He's the definition of Dade County dog. He's an absolute must get by the University of Miami, and they they should not let that kid slip away. He he has every his ceiling's just unbelievable. I could rant all day about the kid. I'm just in shock at some of the stuff he's able to do. When he jumps, he floats. He 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 breaks in and out of breaks really well. Just the kid's a dog. Yeah, and look, and you. Formerly of Miami Immortals, for those who don't know, Jose Duasso now just started Team Raw. Uh, program been very good to Miami. I know you don't steer kids, but certainly it helps to have somebody that's trustworthy um, with these kids. Immortals, you're talking about Cam Kitches, the first first team All-America uh, on defense in a while. Uh, came out of your program. Uh, Wesley Besaint, who, who really flashed at the end of the year. And Team Raw was able to get on campus. I know you weren't there, but the team was able to get uh, to the University of Miami, including Julian Sain, the the quarterback committed to Alabama yeah. first. Uh, I committed out of Alabama. I know Nisha Montgomery on our offense was there, someone that Mario had massive uh, priority on, who's a 2025. And, like, my friends like to text me, dude, this guy's built like an avatar uh, at receiver. And funny story, he's actually from Rhode Island, and he's coming down here and dominating South Florida which is really nice to see uh, that he is a legitimate prospect because if you could run with the dogs down here, you're certified. Um, Mazio Bennett was another big priority from what my staff said by coaches, receiver out of South Carolina. Uh, funny about him, his dad is a massive Canes fan, so hopefully that plays into uh, the favor for, for the school. But uh, and, I, and I have that we have a hidden gem in Daryl Harper out of Miami Columbus. Uh, we he's he's a little guy, but his nickname's Big Man for a reason because he plays like a big man. Big Man's just the absolute truth. He'll be a steal for a college out there. But but Miami really focused on Nation and Mazio on the offensive side of the ball, and with uh, obviously Ellis Robinson was a number one priority. Yeah, Mazio been also a former teammate of Jaleel Skinner in South Carolina, as I understand. Yeah, him and Jaleel have a relationship. So Ellis Robinson go there, number one corner in the country. Somebody that Miami is recruiting says he's going to commit soon. I imagine Miami will keep recruiting him no matter where he commits. You had Desmond Ricks last year on the immortals. You coached him, been around Cormani McLean, been around a lot of top guys. Uh, how would you say Ellis Robinson stacks up as far as being a five-star corner? What are some of his, his strengths and weaknesses at that five-star level? D money. I know you love multi-sport athletes. There's nothing that gets your blood going than watching a guy dominate in another sport. When we hang up on this Zoom, I will be sending you a video on 
Ellis with a torn meniscus playing pickup basketball and hitting a windmill in one of his IMG teammates' face on the basketball court. So I, I, I know what that usually means when it comes to you is you're sold on a prospect when you see stuff like that. Uh, freakish athletic tendencies, um, makeup speed. Uh, he likes to bait some quarterbacks and he just makes up – the speed to to break on the ball and def- so many pass deflections this week. I, I don't think I've ever seen – I would like to see interceptions, but the amount of pass deflections he had was was incredible. Physical, just checks every single box of what you want to see in a five-star. Now, Luane McCoy, you mentioned Miami Central, recently offered by the Miami Hurricanes. Um, you know, from what I've seen him, I thought he looked good at receiver – I really liked him at cornerback, to be honest with you, with his length. I thought that just from what I've seen, I haven't seen him at a ton, but from what I've seen him, that to me looked like a, a very interesting position for him. Uh, how do you see him and, you know, what are your impressions of him as far as being a Miami prospect? Look, I'll take him on either side of the ball. I believe his ceiling's at the wide receiver position. I think he can make it actually on both sides. He's that disgusting. But at receiver, he just – his routes – Hit, how he could break in and out of his breaks and speed change his speed and direction is incredible. And the biggest thing is he floats like as he keeps going up. If a guy's going down, he's staying there traits that you, I would actually compare to Carmani McLean, who was the number one corner of the country. Wayne has very, very similar athletic characteristics as the f- former number one corner in the country. Uh, I- I'll put him up against probably anyone in this, city and county when it comes pound for pound pure athletic ability um probably outside of jeremiah smith who's the best prospect i've ever seen in my life especially in south florida most put together receiver that's come out of here at least in the last 10 years um but wayne just man I, i he leaves me speechless with some of the stuff he does so and such a good kid too the the coaches at central are doing a great job coaching their kids in the sense of respect factor and just getting shit done, waiting your turn, rotating. And seven on seven is tough when you have a roster full of all-stars. My roster is compiled of three, four, and five stars that all have division one offers. And they have to rotate and realize like, this is kind of like a college atmosphere. You're on a team with everybody just as talented as you. And from central to all my kids, this is probably the easiest group I've probably ever had to deal with when it comes to egos. So it's a breath of fresh air. Well, look, I know, you know, I'm a big intangibles guy. And I remember when Cameron Kitchens was coming out, you were very clear to me. And you said it on this podcast that this guy's a different kind of caliber as far as personal, the way he, he cares, the intelligence, just the the yeah, the whole package. He, he's he he wears his hard hat and shows up to work every day at 5 a.m. and he's the last one to leave the job site. And so you see the results, obviously, first team all American as a sophomore. Um, so anybody that you've identified. Uh, on your team or around I maybe mean, not other teams, but just someone you've identified um, that you say, wow, this guy's cu- a little different in terms of the way he approaches the game. Ellis. Yeah. Uh, on my IMG robots. <laughs> uh, you go there. IMG St. Francis, any of these schools that these kids are living at, working out every day, like a college program. Those are the ones you are turning heads now because you know, If you're investing into a kid's future like that, you know he already knows the process. And on top of already knowing the process, him and Dez are the two most freakishly athletic kids I've ever had, and they know what the process is in waking up for work at 5 a.m. every day and being the last one to check out being at IMG. Yeah, you mentioned Desmond Ricks. Uh, I won't ask you to comment, but I will point out that you did say from the beginning that Miami should be going harder after Desmond Ricks as compared to Cormani McClain. Um, and, you know, we'll see what hist- how history plays out with that. But, um, you know, I tend to agree with you just from a character perspective. You want to go after guys that are, are self-starters and, you know, you don't have to lose sleep over them, um, what they're doing. And, again, Camp Kitchens, that example, you said it from the beginning. What's the Saint, another one? Uh, those are the guys that tend to succeed. There's a lot of talented athletes out there, uh, but those are the guys that uh, they really stand out. So we'll be watching Ellis Robinson. And, uh, you know, want to talk to you about the Adidas deal because that was a huge deal for you guys. Uh, I know Miami fans uh, appreciate, you know, your programs, both because of the talent that comes out, some of the talent that's been to Miami, and the fact that, you know, you're not going to steer anybody anyway, but you're not going to steer kids away from Miami, certainly, and, you you know, they'll be on campus. So tell me about the deal with Adidas and, uh, and what it means for your program. 
No, nah, it's absolutely huge to be a first year program and, and to land a deal like Adidas to support our program just stamps us in the seven on seven industry is we're a force to be reckoned with, especially being a first year program and to grab such such a deal like that is is extremely unheard of. So uh Adidas has been a little quiet in the space with adding on teams. So this is kind of a some big news in, in our space. Uh, just just really happy for the opportunity and hopefully continue keeping the brand happy and bringing on other big sponsors to to ride this seven on seven AAU like wave that over time's helping B- battle is a big uh piece into where we're at in the space over time grab the torch and they're running with it what's awesome is both of those uh tournaments are working with each other but Overtime raised over $100 million for Overtime Elite in basketball and OT7 in football. So there's a commitment to a company, at least for a few years, to help promote our athletes on a on a social media perspective. And it was today's name, image, and likeliness. Uh, hopefully teams can take advantage of help branding their players like what we're doing. I've been really fortunate to have Joel Shapiro on, who helps with Gaines Insights, Instagram stuff, Jay Money, uh, The Goat, and Andrew Ferrelli who a lot of Canes fans know from Twitter, he came over from the Express, saw my vision, what we're trying to do in the community, brand building, all that stuff to help these kids just, when they get to the next level, could create something organic for them than uh, what these NIL deals are nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Joel's the man. Uh, Glad to have him and, you know, glad to uh, see what some of the stuff he's doing with Team Raw. So last thing, Players, you know, I always like to ask about your players. At the same time, you have an objective opinion of some of the guys you played. You mentioned Jeremiah Smith, probably the best receiver you've seen. I agree. I think he's better than, you know, Ennis, Judy, Ridley, and those guys are great. Uh, and like I'm talking about Jeremiah Smith could have graduated his sophomore year of high school, stepped onto a college campus, and probably played at probably 95 percent of the schools out there. Yeah, AJ Green definitely some similarities there with the acceleration at the height. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Trader though the other the other receiver at Chaminade. Must- uh, Elon Musk for Miami, just absolute stud. I'll, I'll give you one because I know this will put a smile on your face. Belen Jesuit has a nice hidden gem in Bryce Fitzgerald. I want to say his name. He actually uh, intercepted Julian Sane. The only uh, points that the Immortals were able to really get off us was that interception. And Bryce made a hell of a freaking play. Baited Sane and you saw the burst in athleticism that you want to see in a defensive back. Uh, the Trillion Boys had a couple guys that, I don't know their names, th- that impressed me. Uh, another one that really impressed me was Boo Carter out of Tennessee. He's a freak, lightning in a bottle. Uh, a D-Money special, multi-sport athlete, posting quadruple doubles at the point guard position like he's Rajon Rondo. So, yeah. I know that's a guy. Miami D-Money. recruiting him at running backs uh, for the for the Canes fans. Miami's recruiting Boo Carter uh, pretty hard. <clears throat> So, so yeah, there, there, there's a list of guys, but uh, Trader and Smith are the bell of the balls. And hey, you, you get my boy Bryce uh, from Belen. You can help, you know, if some kids need help with their homework and maybe aren't qualifying, he'll uh, he'll hook them up on top of being a great athlete. So, you know. <laughs> the money always with the academic praise of Belen. Yeah, doing it all. We're doing it all. Hey, Hose, always a pleasure, man. Uh, what's the next tournament? What's the next big thing? Uh, we'll be in Vegas Super Bowl weekend. Uh, also, someone that I didn't mention, uh, Cam Kitchens, his little brother, Demetrius Kitchens, has come onto the scene abruptly fast. I don't know if uh, if the confidence in him that his brother was an All-American is giving him, but that's a kid definitely to keep an eye on. I don't I don't think Miami will circle around on him. It's, he's kind of a late bloomer, but he will be a steal for most colleges. Yeah, and look, genes go a long way. You know, TJ Watt, no one recruited him that hard. He ended up being what he became. Uh, Clay Matthews was a walk-on somehow uh, and, you know, saw what happened to him. These guys tend to bloom a little bit later. Um, so, you know, who knows what happens with Kitchens. But uh, the last one certainly worked out The uh, that, I don't want to say Immortals to Miami Pipeline because now it's Team Raw, but the Duasa to Miami Pipeline is strong. Uh, maybe Luane McCoy will be the next one up uh, for the Hurricanes. So, Coach, Enjoy that reunion. Take care. And uh, looking forward to have you on after a win in Vegas. All right. I appreciate you, D-Money.